Nucleophile and similar term electrophile are words that we use very often in organic chemistry. And so it's very important that you have a really solid understanding of a nucleophile and also of an electrophile. This video is going to go over definitions of both nucleophile and electrophile and show you a lot of different types of examples of them. So first, to start with, nucleophile literally means lover, that's the file part, of a nucleus. So a nucleus, uh, excuse me, a nucleophile is a nucleus lover. In, and this is referring to the nucleus of an atom. So think about the nucleus of an atom, what subatomic particles are located in an atom's nucleus. As you know, it contains protons and neutrons. The nucleus of the atom contains protons and neutrons. So the nucleus of an atom is positively charged. So a nucleophile is something that loves the nucleus or the positively charged component of a molecule. Nucleophiles are often compared to bases. So I'm going to put in an AKA, a base, as in like acid-base chemistry. Bases usually are also nucleophiles not all the time. So don't kind of jam it in your head that a nucleophile is a base. Occasionally a base, uh, we have examples of nucleophiles that are not bases or bases that are not nucleophiles, but the majority of bases are nucleophiles and vice versa. Here are some examples of nucleophiles. Molecules that have double bonds. I drew a carbon-carbon double bond, but it could be any type of double bond. Molecules that have triple bonds. And again, I drew a carbon-carbon triple bond, but it could be any triple bond. Molecules that have atoms with lone pairs of electrons on them, like an oxygen with a lone pair of electrons, or anything with a lone pair of electrons. Molecules that have, well, this wouldn't be a molecule, compounds that have full-blown negative formal charges. So here's a molecule that has a carbon atom with a lone pair of electrons, causing it to have a negative formal charge. And also, last but not least, molecules that have partial, atoms with partial negative charge. Remember this notation? From general chemistry, this represents a significant polarity in the carbon-lithium bond, which causes a partial negative charge. So these are the five types of molecules that would qualify as being a nucleophile, a molecule that has a double bond or a triple bond, lone pair of electrons, negative formal charge, or partially negative formal charge. All of these substances have what we call an electron-rich area. And those are the areas, the electron-rich areas, are the things that I've pointed to in each molecule with the pink arrows. So they are a part of the molecule that has high electron density, lone pairs of electrons, which of course are very electron-rich, and negative charges, whether they are a full negative charge or a partial charge, definitely very electron-rich. And then also double bonds and triple bonds, even though they aren't charged and they don't contain lone pairs of electrons, remember that double and triple bonds contain those pi, uh, the p orbitals in pi bonds that have those extra electrons in them overlapping. So there's very electron uh, rich area around a double and triple bond. And that electron rich area causes the nucleophile, the, the molecule or the compound to be attracted to anything, we'll just say a compound with a positive charge. 
and it doesn't even have to have a full positive charge. It could just be attracted to a sort of exposed nucleus of any sort of atom. So nucleophiles, kind of in the summary, they are going to have double bond. They are going to have a triple bond. They might have a lone pair or a negative charge. So what about electrophiles? Electrophiles are really the opposite of a nucleophile. So again, the phile part means that it is a lover. The electro part means electron. So an electrophile is an electron lover. And as you know, electrons are negatively charged. So electrophiles are lovers of substances that are negatively charged or portions of molecules that are negatively charged. Electrophiles are like acids. So the way that nucleophiles are similar to a base, an electrophile is similar to an acid. And again, this is sort of like 99% of the time, an electrophile is also going to be an acid. So it's a pretty good generalization that you can make. If it's an acid, if it's an acid it's also an electrophile. There are not as many examples of electrophiles as there are of nucleophiles. So one example would be a molecule that has a partial positive charge. Again, this is due to significant difference in electronegativity between the two atoms that are bonded together. Um, and in this case, this particular carbon atom has a partial positive charge. That positive charge is attracted to a negatively charged electron. Another option, there's only one other option, would be a molecule that has a full-blown positive charge, like this guy right here. So this is a carbon that has a full-blown positive charge. Electrophiles, they're like the opposite of a nucleophile, they have, instead of an electron-rich area, they have an electron deficient area. And that electron deficient area is what causes them to be attracted to a negatively charged molecule or compound or a negative portion of a molecule or a compound. And for electrophiles, the only examples of electrophiles are positive charges, molecules that have full or partial positive charges.